Hi, I'm Slay and Scissors. Um, I've been doing designs for about seven years, eight years now. I've um, been a barber for 15. I'll be teaching you a design course today on how to do duplication. What I like to do is look up a black and white clip art and that usually breaks it down into two levels that I know what I'm looking at so I can cut it into the hair a little easier. Then I don't have to break down different shadows and lines. So what I like to do is I like to cut the hair down to like a two because I know at a two I can usually put a nice design in there but leaves myself a little bit of room for fading and for the darkness so that the hair can pop in the design area. But then also gives me a little space for um, a mistake or say the hair is a lot lighter than it looks. If I cut the hair down to a one automatically, the hair could look like a light blonde or a light brown when the hair is really, really dark on top if it's thicker. So I just like to start at a two and it gives me a, a better idea of where I can go with it. So I'm going to use the Babyliss Pro to go ahead and create my first initial lines in. Whenever I put my first initial lines in, I like to start at the middle of the design so I can make sure that I have room to make mistakes on the outside or to leave the outside out. If the middle's gone, it doesn't have enough room for the middle, the whole thing's going to look disproportionated or disproportionate and you want to make sure that it's it's all portionate to the picture you're trying to make. So if I accidentally leave one leaf off of a design that's a flower, they're not going to notice the one leaf, but if I leave the middle of the rose out, they're going to notice that it looks like not a rose. A holly leaf with a bell today. So I'm going to start in at the middle of the holly leaf and allow this one to come up and come over here. My bell will be placed right in here so that I have enough room to fade out the bottom. So using the corner of my blade, I'm going to go in and draw like as if it were a pencil my first initial line and I don't care that it's not perfect and then always using the back of my blade because the back of my blade leaves a clean line but if I use the inside of my blade that's the moving blade so it'll eat away at the hair and leave a rough line so you want to make sure that you leave the clean edge on the inside that you're going to be cutting away at. cutting away at. and I only really work on about a half an inch at a time. And the round lines are the hardest lines to create. Because they automatically want to take on like a different personality of their own. I don't really worry about any of the detail work, like the tying work, to making it all beautiful until the end. Once I get my outline in there, that's when I really go in and I try to perfect it and make it look even better. But when I first started doing designs, that's when I would sweat and I'd freak myself out because I, it looked so ugly in the middle of it. But that's when you got to tell yourself nobody knows. Nobody knows what this is gonna look like. It's all in your head. And nobody really knows what the abilities or your your abilities to do a haircut or a design are until you've done it. And no matter what, they're probably gonna be surprised. And if you wanna try something, you might as well just try it. Like ask one of your clients that you're used to doing like two lines in them. Ask them next time to do like a star or a zigzag or a little swirl. Don't charge them, just ask them. It's gonna give you a little bit of time to practice it and see if you know you can even do something like that. I used to do free little designs all the time just because I wanted to be able to practice it. First time somebody asked me for a star, I instantly was like, can you draw a star? Like, can you draw a star without doing this? If you can't draw a star without doing this, I can't draw it on your head. Now I do stars all the time. Where there's a will, there's a way. You just gotta figure it out. And somebody's out there doing that, so you might as well be. When I was in barber school, my teacher told me, 
All right, if somebody asks you for something, you better be able to do it. You're not a barber if you can't do all hair types, excluding like, you know, women's stuff, perms, color, things that you're not licensed to do. But that's what he would tell us. If you weren't, if you weren't able to do all hair that walked in the door, you weren't a, a barber. So again, using the corner of my blade, I use my pinky as a base so that I, if he moves, sneezes, laughs, tells a joke and thinks he's hella funny, you know, he, his head don't bounce around and now I make a hole in the middle of my cool design that no longer looks like a cool design. So at this point, I've got basically most of the design cut in. And now all I gotta do is really perfect it and fade everything out around it so it really pops. So now I'm gonna remove a lot of the hair around the design. So if I keep my finger on the area that I know I don't wanna remove, I can't accidentally remove it. So I know this is one of the leaves, this is one of the leaves. But when you have a design like this and you've only cut in a little bit of the design, but just the outline, it's real hard to see and you might accidentally cut away at a spot that you don't want to cut away at. So if I put my finger there, I'm not going to accidentally cut it. And then it just becomes that more, that much more popped and you can really see the difference. And I know not to cut there for the rest of it. You're only using the corner of your blade when you're coming up into those areas that are real tight or real small. I place my finger at the top of each one of these points. So then because I've got that already done, I'm going to come in with the corner of my blade and really clean up those edges so I can see them. If you break your clipper down into just a couple pieces, like three pieces of your blade. So when I'm using it, I like to break it down into three parts. If I'm using the right corner or the left corner or the middle, you know, if I'm using the, the right corner, I'm really just trying to get on anything going one way or the left corner, I'm trying to get anything going the other way. But then it makes it easier to solidify one to two hairs. And when you're doing a design, one to two hairs matters. You can make an eyeball look like he's super surprised if you get one to two hairs in and it's, it's too much. But you use the whole blade at once, the head's round, you'll never get a design to turn out right. So turn it and use your same clipper that you would be using as like a pencil. I've used the design clippers before. I'm not a fan. They just, they don't seem to do as much for me as the corner on my blade will. A lot of times, if you can't see something directly looking at it, you'll want to turn them around and look in your mirror. And if you can literally touch the spot, you can cut the spot. So you keep your finger on the area and then you just go in a little bit and make minute adjustments to remove one to two hairs and you'll see if it's straighter. Right there. I can see these two, three hairs. I'll use the back of my blade. Come out and smooth that out. And I'm not worried about what's on this side of that line because on this side of that line is going to get all faded out, you know? So when I remove that little tiny point that kind of brought this in, just like I'm going to do right in here. So 
So I know I put my two up in here. So I'm gonna take my one and a half all the way open. And I'm gonna start to blend this line out. And no guard, I'm just gonna bring this shadow up just so it has more of a drop fade to go with the design that I put in. Even though he had a really nice fade. Nice job, Clipsy. Clipsy cuts. <laughs> and then just around this edge, just so I can soften this line out but not fade it completely out, I'm gonna use the corner of my blade and go right around that design. Always combing the hair back into position so I don't move the hair. If I don't comb it back into position, the hair can start going in the wrong direction and then I push the line up. So for every couple strokes I make with the clippers, I comb the hair in the right position. So with the corner of my blade all the way up, I'm just gonna start blending this line out. All the way open. Close it two notches. One more. And then all the way close. direction that the hair grows and in these areas where you're scared that you might accidentally cut up into the design that you're cutting in your blade does not start cutting until halfway down in the guard no matter what guard you're on so as long as you know where your blades gonna cut in I can basically push my my guard right up to the edge of it and get that line to come out and putting a little bit of tension on the scalp helps you to be able to manipulate that a little more too If you can hear the hair, it's cutting. If not, close your blade a little more. You've already done that. So right in here, you can see there's a little bit of a line just right in there. So I'm gonna take my, the skin, I'm gonna pull it a little bit to the left, which now creates a more straight line instead of it kind of being a little wobble and curvy. You can kind of make it a little more straight just by adding tension and then going kind of across the grain to get that little bitty line out. And then if you're trying to reach for them, you're never going to get the lines out and you're going to hurt your back also. So you want to make sure that they have their head in a position that you can actually work on, especially when you're doing design. There's a lot of awkward positions you end up in. Especially if they want to design over the top of their head, that's hella hard. All the way open. So if you don't have a mirror on you, you can either take a picture or step away. When you give yourself distance or you take a picture or use your mirror, it instantly is like one of those old school pictures with all the dots. And when you were really far away from those dots, it made a picture. But when you're really close to those dots, it just looks like a bunch of dots. So utilize the space to give yourself that distance to really see if your lines are straight or not. And if you don't have the space, take a picture. It'll create that instant space. So each and every time you have somebody walk in your shop, it's really just your opportunity to have your business card walk around for two to three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. 
So every time you do a design or you do a haircut, you spend the time making sure that that haircut is perfect because that's your name walking out of the shop. They're going to walk around and be like wearing your name on their head for the next two to three weeks. So every time somebody sees them, they're either going to be like, oh, yo, your barber's fly or be like, what the hell happened to you? So you need to make sure that you're taking that extra time to make sure your name is walking around looking fly. I have no problem stopping a client after they have walked out of my shop. They can be as far as getting in the car and I will run out. If I see something wrong on their head, somebody else is gonna see it. And I don't want nobody walking around going, oh, Sarah did some screwed up work. Slang and scissors sucks. You should not get a design from her. If I saw it, somebody else will see it. Do not be too hot or too, too big headed to walk out the door and be like, yo, I see something, I need to fix it. Your clients will appreciate it. So this is the part where you go in and you add your own personality to it. So I like to add like a little fade in a lot of the things I do. So I'm gonna add like a little lighter fade in the middle of the bell so that it looks like it's popping. So when you stretch the skin, you give yourself about a hair or two more space to work in. So when I stretch the skin, I know I don't want the top of my blade to touch that top line. I really just want to clean up this bottom line. I give myself the space that that, that moving blade won't accidentally touch that top line and move it anymore. They're pulling kind of to the side a little bit. I'm sort of feathering in the little tiny hairs without blending in 100% because I want to keep the idea of the, the line around the, the little ball. But I don't want it to be super hard. So if I take the whole line out, you're not going to see inside of the, any of the inside of the bell. And I want you to see the inside of the bell. So we're going to be using the Elegance Shave Gel today. I never recommend doing a dry shave. So applying a little bit to the back of your hand. All right, so what we're going to do is apply a nice amount of product all the way around the design. If you have a dry shave, you're more likely to cut the client or cause irritation. So using the corner of my blade, I'm going to be working just around the edges and just in those small little areas to create more of a detail line. But I don't want to pull the whole thing off. I'm not going to remove all of the hair. It's just as if I was doing a lining. So starting in the corner, making sure that the skin is nice and taut. Corner of my blade. And you can hear it. but just so you can see how much more shiny and how much more crisp that looks versus any other area. I don't know if you can't see the edge of your blade because it's covered in hair, you're gonna cut too far. So you wanna clean the edge of your blade off. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the revitalizing toner to make sure that he is nice and sanitized and his pores are closed down and there's no irritation. You always wanna close the pore with something after you're done with your haircut, aftershave toner. Just something to make sure that he is sanitized and there is no irritation. Nobody's gonna come back to you and be like, hey, you gave me bumps last time. Um, can't stress that enough. A little goes a long way. Just a little bit. No burn because we have no cut. 